uh, at Damstra, and I am feeling very um, lucky to be sharing with you today the new contractor management portal. We are um, recording today's session, so that session will be available for you to rewatch um, if you do miss any of the content today or if you'd like a refresher on, on any of that content. Um, now you will see that your microphones are switched off, which means just because we've got such a big group um, in here today for this session, um, We've turned the microphones off just so that we didn't get a lot of noise coming through in the background. But please, if you do have any questions, um, please use the chat window for those questions. Uh, I do have some wonderful support um, here with me today. So we've got Prakash, JP and Martina, who are all here and will be watching over the chat window, answering any questions um, that come up. So, um, do, do take advantage of the chat window. Throughout the, the session, I will try to keep an eye on that chat window as well. We do have a lot to get through today. So I may just sort of just be head down, bum up, getting through the content, but I am really looking forward um, to sharing that with you. Uh, before we get started, does anybody have any questions they would like to pop in the chat window? Okay, doesn't look like we've got any coming through as yet. So, um, oh, that, that's that's great, team. Um, so what I'm going to do just to help with the bandwidth of um, the recording, um, I will turn my camera off. Uh, we have a question. So Steph asked, um, how long do we have access to the old system? Um, I had a conversation with Christian about this a couple of weeks ago, and he did say that we will have the two sessions, uh, the two different portals running uh, for a couple of months. So there is a little bit of transition time for you to move across from the old system into the new system. I'm hoping though, once you see how much easier the new system makes the process for you, you will want to transition across over. There are a couple of functionalities that um, aren't currently um, available in the new system just yet. They're being um, developed right now and will hopefully be released um, very soon. So those couple of functions you will still need to um, refer to the old portal, but the majority of work that you'll be doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, will be available for you to do in the in the new in the new portal, which will which will be wonderful. Um, when you say an overview, um, are you talking about some help desks, some like some um, um user guides um we the, in the invite to the training session there were some user guides there for you um to view so we can resend them out to to all of the participants and um, there are also some learning videos um in those help desk articles as well so um plus you'll also have have this video to refer to um, I had administrator access for my business, but I cannot see that in the new system. Is that coming? Um, there is administrator access. So what I'll do is we're going to look at how you actually set up new users in the system and you will be able to see um, if you're an administrator or just a um, standard user. So this is where you'll be able to um, to check that, Judy. So um, hopefully we'll be able to answer your question then. So this, the new portal definitely has administrator administrator access. Wonderful. Okay, team. So as I said, I'm going to turn my camera off just to help reduce the um, the bandwidth. Um, and plus, I will be looking to the other side. So <laughs> it helps me not, not, not be so distracting to you as I'm doing the training. Okay, so team, let's get started. So let's have, first of all, um, have a look at what we'll be talking about in today's session. So first thing we're going to have a look at is why are we changing? We'll then um, look at how we log on to the new portal. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, um, employee profiles, so how you look up an employee's profile, uh, the information that you'll have available, which is the same that you had available in the old system. So what we do want to make really clear with this new portal is that the basis of the system is the same. The process of what you're doing is the same. So you will still, this is where you still create worker profiles. It is where you um, mobilise workers. It is where you can view a worker's profile to see what skills they ha have, what skills are, are about to expire. All of that information 
is exactly the same. You just have a new interface that you're using to find that information. Okay, everyone. So it is all, all, all the, the crux of the system is the same. It's just a much more user-friendly system um, for you to use, which is wonderful. Uh, so we'll then have a look at how you go about updating an employee's details and um, how you remove an employee. So if an employee leaves your business and you no longer want them um, on to have a profile, how you would go about doing that. We will then look at how you mobilise an employee, which is much simpler. Team, I think you're going to be looking forward to that. Um, if you've got any mobilisations requiring attention, how you find those, how you manage expiry dates, um, how to create um, user accounts, and then we'll end off with the help desk, so how you access the, the help desk. Um, can you please confirm if this new portal is just for IFA? No, it is for um, all. Um, it's uh, The new portal is how you cr uh, create a worker profile and how you mobilise a worker to a work site. So this portal would be for our, our contractors who have our workers that are joining a work site and then how you, um, those work sites also, how they will um mobilise their permanence onto work sites as well. Um, you do can access um, iFi from here though, but it is um, bigger than just that. So not used for setting up internal stuff. No, yeah, yeah, definitely your permanence. Yeah, you definitely um, can set up your permanence here as well. Yeah, so that old company portal will go and you will do it in here. So do you use the old company portal to um, induct your workers onto, onto your, your work site? Laura and Matt, do you use the old company portal? Yeah, you do. Yep, excellent. So this is definitely, yeah, you'll definitely use this instead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, excellent. Okay, team. So let's go in and have a look. So first of all, let's start with why we're changing. Okay, so currently we have two different websites to induct workers um, onto a work site and then for our work sites to manage their work sites. Okay, so we have um, the company web, which is what everyone would know as the um, company portal. So you should all be very, very familiar with this. So we've got this website where you create profiles for your workers and then you induct them onto the work site. And then the second um, website that we have is uh, what's known as TWMS. So TWMS is probably not familiar to any of our contractors that we have here um, in, the, in the session today, but would be very, very familiar to our work site. So this is where our work sites go in and, and manage their, their staff on their work sites. Okay, so currently we've got two different different um, websites that, that people will use. These two websites are going to be coming together and now you will only have one website, which is wonderful. So here is our new website here. So it's au.danstraglobal.com. Now, how you move in between. So if you are a contractor, when you log into this website, you will automatically go into the manage your company um, site or, or toggle that we call it, where you'll be able to uh, create profiles for new workers and induct them onto a work site, check expiries, do all of that stuff that you currently do in the company portal. For any of our work sites, this is where you will log on to the EPP and then how you change your view so that you view the new um, uh, contractor management um, portal is by up the top left hand corner, you've got a little drop down list here, you click on manage your company and then that will switch you into the contractor management portal where you will induct your workers, you'll you can also check expiries and everything there as well. Okay, so that's our first change. So going from two different websites into one website. So I only need to remember for our for our work, our work sites, one login now, which is wonderful. One login, one password. Another reason why we're changing is 
as you know, if you are inducting a new worker um, onto a work site, it is a two step process which takes a minimum of two days. So your first step is that you need to get a profile created for your worker. Once you, you um, enter in all the details for the worker, you send that information off to Damstra. Damstra then verifies the documentation and creates a profile for the worker. Once that profile has been created, you are then able to go in and mobilise or induct your worker onto a work site. Again, that step takes around 24 hours. So you've got you know, a two-step two process taking two days. This process has now been combined into one step, which is wonderful. So what you'll be doing all together is creating um, a profile for the worker and then inducting them onto the work site all in one step. Um, because it's all in one step, that is going to reduce the administration time down to just around that 24 hours instead of that 48 hours. Okay, so reducing that time. What do we think about that team? Give me a one to 10 in the chat window. One for, I was okay with the two days to 10, bring it on. <laughs> I can't wait for it to just be a one-step process, not a two-step process. Love it. Yeah, I think that's my favourite thing about the change is that now it's a one-step process, not a two-step process. Okay, now there are also a lot of other little changes in the system. The website is a lot more user-friendly um, for our work sites. It's bringing cohesiveness with the view of this, the screen. So the screens all look the same. So it just makes it a little bit more familiar as well. Um, Steph just asked a really great question. If we start the process, can we stop halfway through and do we need to go start again? No, you don't, Steph. The system will remember where you ended and then you can go back and resume where you finished off last time. So it'll have saved everything that you did and then you can just pick up from where you left off. So yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really, really good. So team, they're the biggest reasons why we're changing. Okay, so now we know why we're changing and how it's gonna be much better. Let's now go in and look at how um, to log on. Okay, so your login details should already be created for you. Okay, so when you log on to this website, what you will just put in is your email address and your password, okay? Your email address is the email address that is associated to your current login in the company portal, okay? So in the company portal, you've actually got a username, which you usually use to log in, but with that username, it did have a, an email address that you would have assigned to that, to that um, login. So you will just use that email address and then the exact same password. OK, if you are unsure of what email address um, you have used, you can actually jump into the current uh, company portal. And then if you go into um, just your admins might only have access to this. So you may need to refer to your users that have administration access. If you just ask them to have a look at where they go to manage admin um, accounts for the company portal, here they'll be able to see, they'll be able to give you that email address that is associated with your your login okay so just use that email address and your password team if anybody is having any issues logging in using your email address and password as i say first thing just check the email address here if you think you know your password and you're having a little bit of troubles maybe try to jump into the company portal and re-enter the password to make sure that you're entering it incorrectly um, if you're still having issues from then um, just email service at dampstratechnology.com and let them know that your username um, which is your email address and your password's not working and if they can give you give you a hand and they'll, they'll help you through that okay any questions in regards to that team? No, excellent. Okay, so let me just go back in and log in. So let me jump into the web. So I'm just gonna pop my email address in. Okay. 
Hopefully I type that in correctly. Um, for anyone, oh, I've not had that before. Why are you coming up? That might be because of our internal security. Oh, okay. You threw me there. <laughs> Let me um, log in using my, I'm just going to log on team using my um, single sign on. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, if you are one of our work sites, you may have single sign on set up, which you can just click on your single sign on and that'll give you access to the, to the site. Okay, team, now. Um, because I am technically a work site, when I have logged into um, the website, I have uh, opened up onto my manage my work site page. So if you are from one of our, our work sites, this is the screen that the system will open up to for you initially. OK, so to um, open up the um, contract and management portal, what we do is click up here on the top left hand corner where it says manage your work site. So I'm currently managing my work site. You'll see that I've got an option to change to managing your company. So I'll just click on managing your company and my company, manage my company page will open up. For any of our contractors here on, on the training today, this is the site that will automatically open up for you. Okay, so let's get in and get our hands dirty and have a look at, at the site. Let me just change um, my work site. So team, um, what I just did at the top here, you won't need to worry about just being a Dampshire employee it means I have access to a couple of different databases. So I'm just changing over to my training database so that um, we can look at um, training data. Well, let's have a look what's our first Thing we're going to talk about today. So we're going to have a look at empl employee profiles. So team, the information that you're going to be able to find on the employee profile is pretty much exactly the same information that you currently have access to. It's just going to look a little bit different. So to um, find your um, employees profiles, what we're going to do is down the left hand side, you'll find the main menu. So here we've got our home page. Our home page is going to give you high level, a high level overview of what's happening within um, your workers uh, that you have that you're managing. So here we can see I've got currently 107 mobilizations requiring attention. So maybe I haven't completed one yet. So Steph, this is where I would find if I started halfway and I needed to continue, this is where I would find them. Maybe some documentation that I had submitted for a worker has been, for a lack of a better word, rejected and I need to resubmit documentation. So this is where I would find them. Um, here are where we'd see a session soon but not yet confirmed and then in progress, our total in progress. So we can see how many we've got here with um, our mobilizations in progress. Um, employee expiries. So here it's telling me I've had 45 um, employees uh, with um, validations that have expired in the last um, three months and I've got 94 expiries coming up in the next three months. Okay, so looking good. Now down the left hand side, as I said, we've got our main menu. So the, to look at a workers profile, we're going to click on workforce management. They are Laura Mads, it's just different language that gets used. So mobilizations and inductions are, pre, are the same thing. Yeah, they are, great question. Really good question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just different language. Some people call them mobilizations, other key people call them inductions. So yeah. Okay, so clicking on workforce management, you'll see that we've got an option for all employees. So if I click on all employees, it'll actually bring up a list of all of my employees. I can filter the list by last name so I can find my workers by last name here. I can also use the search bar in the top right hand corner to search. 
Um, once I've found my worker, um, I can click on pro, um, profile and this will bring up my worker's profile for me. So here I can see um, their photo ID, their Damstra ID number. I've got access to their mobilization so I can see how many sites they've been mobilized on. I can expand and it'll give me a uh, high level overview of that um, mobilization. I can see whether they are active or not. If our um, the mobilization um, isn't active any longer, we'll see a red cross here, which tells us potentially something has expired on their, their profile. If I wanted to go in and have a look at the details of their mobilization, I can click on details and through here, it will tell give me a list of all of the requirements that are required for that particular mobilization. Um, here I can see that I just need um, photo ID. I can expand on that because this mobilization um, can have one of three documents for that particular requirement. I can see which one um, has been submitted for the employee or the worker. If any of these have expired team, this would be red and there'd be a red cross on here. So really easy when you're looking at a worker's profile to actually see what um, has expired because it will be in red and um, it'll have a red cross here. Going back to their profile, I can then click on skill records. I can go in and look at any qualifications they may have. Hey team, this is a really great example of an expired skill. So here we can see that this is red. So that lets me know that that, that particular skill has expired. This skill here must not be required for their mobilization, hence why their mobilization is still valid. Um, but this, this skill here must isn't tied to that mobilization. Um, but yeah, so that's what an expired one will look like. So I can look at qualifications or worksite specific skills if my worker has any of those. I can see them here as well. Now, if I wanted to um, update the employee's details, where I can do that is by clicking on employee details over here on the right hand side and here is where you'll find all of their details and then if I needed to update any of those details I just click edit details and I can go in here and make changes and then to save it you click send for verification that information will be sent off to the Damstra team the Damstra team will um, verify any of the changes made to that workers profile the last one last thing I wanted to show you in regards to employee profiles is if a a worker does leave and you no longer want them as part of your work Force. Um, to re um, remove them, you click on the more button, you will then have the option to remove from company. Here it'll ask you to give a reason and then it'll take a, um, a record of that. We'll make a record of that in the database so that we as a, as a Damstra can see who removed them and why they were removed from, from the database. Um, any questions on any of that? No questions. How are we feeling so far? Give me one word to let me know how you're feeling so far about worker profiles. Ah, uh, they can be added back in later, Steph. Yeah, yeah, they can. Um, I, JP, can we do that, or do they do the can the um site do that, or do we need to do that to add them back in? They will be um, Laura Mads. So Laura Mads has asked if someone removes them on the old portal, will they be removed on the new one while they're running at 100%? Whatever changes you make in one will automatically happen the other. They ultimately are the exact same system, just depends on which platform you're choosing to use to do those changes in. Yeah, it all goes back to the, the one database. Yeah, so to um, update um, the documentation for an expiry, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but I'll take you into expiries down here. So in workforce, you'll see you've got employee expiries here. And what this will do, we'll list, it breaks the expiries down into to different um, 
options to help you find them. But if you did need to, something has expired, what you would just do is here we've got a, a resolve button here. So we can click on the resolve button and then it'll take you to the documentation that requires, that has expired and requires you to, to upload it. So what you would then do is upload the documentation in here once it populates for me. Sorry, because we've got so many people on this call. I think my internet is not enjoying life at the moment. Um, but what you would do is upload it into here and then send it for verification. And then the team would verify that documentation. And then um, if it's all OK, they'll uh, the work will then become um, valid again. If it's not OK, they'll send um, a documentation back for you to ask you to, to resubmit if there's anything. But we might come back to that if that's OK. But yeah, 100%, Nicole, you will um, use the, the portal to upload yeah, new documentation. Yeah, good stuff. OK. Oh, yeah, so they are workers' profiles. OK, so let's have a look at mobilising an employee. So this is my favourite bit, team. Um, so how do we go about mobilising an employee? So process goes that we mobilise the employee using the new contractor management portal. Documentation will come to Dampshire to verify. And then um, we will either email you the results. So I'll either let you know if it's all OK, the documentation met the requirements of the work site, or we'll email you to let you know that some of the documentation um, wasn't quite what the work site was looking for. So if you could please um, resubmit that, that documentation. So um, we will... Um, we will um, have a look at, at this process. So what we're going to mainly do, team, is just have a look at this step here, mobilising an employee, because that's the the, the, sun, the fun bit. OK, team, so how of different ways that you can um, get to the screen to mobilise your employee? So I can either click on Workforce Management and then I've got an option in the menu, which is um, mobilise an employee. Or on this homepage, you'll see I've got the option for mobilise an employee. So I'll just click on mobilise an employee. OK, so we've got two options here. So when we get to this screen, I either have the option of mobilising an existing employee or mobilising a new employee. So I'm going to go for this example, mobilising a new employee. So I'm just going to select that. So first thing it'll do is ask me to, to um, pop in the work site that I would like to, to mobilise them on. So let me um, just bring up our demo site. And then you'll get a, to, um, a drop down and select the mobilisation that you need to do. So I'm going to go with portal training number one. We then click the next button. OK, so now we need to go through and complete all of these these screens, which is is um, dramatically reduced on what we have done in the past. So let me. Um, fill this in for you. OK, so with the next of kin. We'll just pop the residential address as the same. So we've gotten through our first um, step, which is adding in our employees details. OK. Excellent. So next step that we're going to move on to is uploading the 
photo ID. I was just going to ask me if my details are correct. I'm going to say yes, they are correct. So now I'm going to move on to my photo ID. So team, really important with the photo ID that if it is a driver's license, the driver's license, you must submit that it is the front and the back of the driver's license. OK, a lot of the times when we send documentation back, it is because somebody has only submitted the front of the driver's license. So just remember, we do need both the front and the back um, of oops, the driver's license. And I uploaded the wrong thing. First thing I need to do is upload the photo. Sorry, team. Um, let me upload the photo. Load the photo. Now I'll do the, the ID. So let me go driver's license, pop in the driver's license and then that in. So with the driver's license. So here, because it is really important that we have both the front and the back of the driver's license, and it is one of the main reasons why we send documentation back. We do have a question in here which says, is the back of the card in the above file? Um, if you do answer no to that, it is going to prompt you to upload this, the back of the, the, um, the driver's license, okay? If you have done both the front and the back, we will, um, you just need to click, click yes, okay? So that question has been put in there to reduce um, the admin time because the, the back of the driver's license hasn't been submitted. Okay, let me just pop in an expiry date and then we upload our driver's license. Now, the next question that comes up or the next section in our mobilisation request is we'll only see this calendar if the mobilisation that you are submitting for your worker has an, a classroom induction. OK, if the mobilisation doesn't require any classroom induction, you won't get the tab of preferred session. OK, so you'll only see this if it is part of the induction process. Now, having a look at the calendar team, you'll see here um, if the worksite has a, um, a lead up period for booking in their sessions, any session which is you're inside that period will be closed, so you can't book them on a closed session, which is wonderful. Um, so it'll be black and it'll block that out. If you do see any options in your calendar which are orange that will tell you that there is a late booking fee for that particular session now whether that happens or not all depends on the work site so each work site does work a little bit differently but if you do see the calendar um, option as orange that will tell you that there is a late booking fee for that session um, anything that's green you're good to go to book in. So I'll book in one of these green options. That means we're not inside um, the cancellation penalties. What I'll then move on to is where I select the job titles, roles or tasks. OK, so we all know how important this section is because this section here is going to determine what documentation needs to be uploaded for that employee. So I am just going to select traffic controller this option. This will then bring me to my employee requirements. So these are the documentate. This is where we upload the documentation that is required for this mobilization or this induction. So let me just, um, so from the drop down list, it'll give you all of the options that are available for that particular um, documentation. So I'll just select that one. And then we go in and upload documentation. So here we pop in our start date and our expiry date. So I'll just pop that in there. Now, a great thing about this start date and expiry date, which is is another amazing change to the system, is if the requirements from the work site um, state that that documentation um, must be valid for a minimum period of time. So let's say a minimum of, you know, um, six months or 12 months or something like that. 
when you you add in the dates of the the, the documentation, if that documentation falls outside of that period, so therefore the documents aren't um, technically valid, the system won't allow you to upload them. In the past, you could do it, um, but uh, you could trick the system by overriding the dates. In our new system, you can't actually override the dates, which is wonderful. Um, that um, having documentation which was uh, not valid long enough was the, is the second most common reason why documentation gets rejected because it's not actually valid for the period of time that it needs to be valid for. Um, so this, the new system actually stops you from being able to upload it, which is great. Wonderful. So we upload our documentation. Now, having a look at the um, ticks down the side, I haven't spoken about them yet, but let me take you through and explain to you what these icons mean down the side. So these icons will let you know um, if the section is complete or um, not quite complete yet. So if you see an orange exclamation mark, it means it's incomplete um, and the, that that section is required. So you need to fill that section in. So you would have seen most of my sections had the orange excla ex exclamation mark when I started. Um, you will see that on here for employee online training that I've got a grey exclamation mark. So what that tells me is that it's incomplete. So I haven't filled that section in, but it's not required actually. So there is no online learning that is required for the learner to, uh, for the worker to do for this induction. Um, you'll see that I've got a, a orange tick, means that you've filled it in, it's completed, um, but the documentation needs to be verified by a Damster employee. And then the green tick tells me that it's complete. So I filled the section in and no verification is required for, um, for that step in the process. OK, so we can see here the employee details has a green tick. It's all good to go. No verification required there. Um, orange for the photo um, and the ID. So it's required. We've filled it in. We've just got to wait for it to be um, verified by a Damster. Um, employee. Our preferred session is complete. You've booked them in. It's all good to go. Job titles and roles because that's um, where we need to verify that along with the documentation that supports that, hence why they've both got orange ticks. Does anybody have any questions in regards to this? Um, yeah. Thanks, Marty, for answering that because we just dummied up some skills. <laughs> um, I did the white. Like, yeah, we've just dummied up up some skills. <laughs> um, yep. Um, does the booking request still not hold the training date until they've approved or have completed the online training induction? So, Marty, are you able to answer that one? So, Lara and Mads have asked, um, yes, all prerequisites needs to be completed before the employee can attend the face-to-face -face induction. Yeah, so it will still need to. This particular um, training uh, induction that we've got here doesn't um, have any online training, but if it did, it'd hold the spot, but it wouldn't send the no, information. No, oh. um, so, no. <laughs> so, oh, no, okay, it, it's, it is correct. It still works the same as um, the current portal, um, Laura Mad. so it doesn't hold that training date for you. Um, it basically adds you to a, a waiting list in a way um, and it, you don't actually get that spot until you've met all the, the requirements. Um, but all those tool tips down the side that um, you would have seen when Karina was going through that is um, there to help you. So we've added in like those, if there's a date requirement, so it's got to be within a certain date range and things like that has all been added into the system to make that process for you a lot quicker and to to help ensure that you do get that spot as soon as you you hit send for verification and that it's approved. Thank you, Marty. Okay, so um, once we've got all our ticks, 
we are then able to send off a verification um, or and payment. So if you do have payment, which is part of the process. So here you'll see we've got pay and send. So in the old system, these two steps were separated. And what we would find would happen on occasion is that people would pay for the induction, but then forget to click the send for verification. Has anyone done that before? Hands up if you've ever done that. You've paid for it, but you didn't forgot to click the, the send <laughs> verification. Yeah. Um, so to remove that, um, from the process, we've actually combined those two steps into one step. Okay, so you'll see here that we've got pay and send for verification. So we can click on that. You'll then see here that um, you select your payment method. So either credit card or purchase order. Marty, can I click purchase order? What will happen if I click, pur click purchase order? <laughs> um, yeah, so this these two payment methods will show depending on how your company has been set up. So is it a credit card only or is it an account? If you select purchase order, that means you set up as an account company and it will let you fill in those purchase order details. If you select credit card, it then brings up the, the credit card payment. Credit card payment, awesome. Can I... Um, because I'm in the training environment, can I can I do this or will it freak out? <laughs> no, you, you can you can do that. That's fine. Just put Lisa, in your purchase sorry, order Lisa. reference and things like that. That's fine. <laughs> sorry, Lisa, I'm going to send you a dummy thing. <laughs> okay, so we do, and then we send for verification. So here it'll say successfully paid and. Um, it'll it'll send off. And then after we've done that team, we can either mobilise another employee or we can um, go in and have a look at our active mobilisation requests. Okay, team, how do we feel about that process? Um, again, on a scale from one to 10, one being nah, I preferred the two-step process in the old system to 10, bring on my new um, system can't wait to whiz through these. Okay, so we've got the 10 and 8, 10. Beautiful. It should really reduce your administration time team. Straight away, we're cutting 20, cutting 24 hours out of it. And I don't know about you, but I found that that flowed when I compare the old company portal to, to the new contractor management um, portal, the flow was just so much smoother um, and, and a lot a lot easier, a lot more user friendly. I knew where I was up to, it was very easy to see, to see where I was at. Now team, I just wanna quickly show you what it looks like um, to mobilise an existing employee because that's um, you know very very similar process. So if we go an existing employee, so again I'm going to go mobilise employee and existing employee. I select my employee um, from my list of employees. Again, I select the work site. Going to mobilise them onto. The mobilization we're going to go with. I'm going to click on you. So this is one that I'd started earlier. <laughs> so um, I think Steph, did you ask the question of if I started something earlier, can I go back and um and have a look at it? Um, so here is where it has actually remembered some of the the details that I've popped in. So it's in remembered my employee details, it's remembered the job title that I selected, it's remembered the um, documentation that I have uploaded. We just haven't sent this for verification as yet. Um, but one thing that I did want to show you, team, is this particular um, mobilisation does have an e-learning module that goes along with it. So I just wanted to show you that you'll now have that e-learning visible to you. Okay, so I know in the past, if there was any e-learning, you weren't actually able to see what that e-learning was, how much e-learning there was for that mobilisation. But if you do click on employee online training, here it will tell you what um, e-learning 
will be made available to your learner or to your worker, sorry, um, once you send off a verification. So for this particular mobilisation, you can see that there is one e-learning module called Contract and Management Portal Training. It's a dummy, dummy session so that we can show that to you today. Now, again, when we send this off for verification, exactly the same thing will happen that happened in the old um, company portal is that as soon as we send off the verification, what will happen is that if your employee is new to this particular work site, a Damstra login will be created for them. Um, and then once they've got that Damstra login, they'll a Damstra learning login, they'll jump into Damstra learning and complete complete their learning. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm I want to say for Laura and Mads, the answer is very much yes for that. But I might leave that for um, <laughs> Marty to answer. But I. I do believe yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, so yeah, everything will will come here. Um, will that go to them directly or still to the employer first? Um, the Danstra learning goes. I believed it went directly to the the learner not to the employer, I thought. I always thought it did go directly to the learner um, the, for their information. Is yeah, that right, Damstra Martin? Learn yeah, that's correct. Damstra yeah. Learning will still directly go uh, to the employee first. Um, the reason we're showing this in here is to just give you a heads up of what what they've been sent and what they need to do. Um, so sometimes um, you're not aware of, you know, they may have 10 lessons they've got to do before they can like get uh, ready to go to, to site. So that's why we've done it is to be transparent and give you all that information up front so you know exactly what your workers need to do uh, before they can can go. To the website, yeah. Ah. Um, Angela, what email address do you enter in for the workers? Because the email address that it will be sent to will be the email address that gets entered into their contact details, their own. Oh, that's interesting. We might need to take that offline because, um, yeah, it reads, it goes to this email, whatever email address that gets entered into here, that's the email address that the e-learning gets sent to. If it's in regards to details regarding their um, classroom induction, Angela, so the classroom induction, um, that gets sent to you, but the e-learning should go directly to the, to the worker. Okay, team. So yeah, so that's how you mobilise a worker. Well, we had a lot of tens, Marty, or a lot of eights or nines or tens. So that was pretty good. I think we can be pretty positive about that. Yes, very, very excited. And one quick thing too, uh, when Karina said things can, you can come back to them later, you basically need to supply us with their first name and last name uh, for a new person. And that's all you need. You can come back in. Um, also with the steps, Karina did it from like top to bottom. You can start putting in for existing, you can start at any spot for new you give us the name, first name and last name, and then you can walk away from the employee details and go to select a session or you can go and add a job title, any of that. So you can do it in any order. You don't need to go from start to finish, which is why you would see that we have removed that next button uh, because it's no longer required. Wonderful. Excellent. Thanks, Marty. I forgot to mention that because that was that's so important that in the old portal you had to go, it was very linear. You had to go through each step, but the new portal, it allows you to jump around and fill in information that you have on hand at that point in time, which is really, really great. Okay, team, so let's go in and have a look at mobilisations requiring attention. So if you do have any mobilisations which documentation isn't quite, um, that's been submitted, isn't quite what is required, um, you will still receive an email from us to um, let you know that something is missing in the documentation. Now, I do also know that you know, sometimes you can get a lot of those emails so that those emails potentially can get a little overwhelming. So what you will be able to do, team, is 
come to the contractor management portal and actually view those yourself and stay on top of them and um, from, from the portal. Okay, so a um, couple of ways we can access them. I can either go workforce management and then um, active mobilisation requests from here, or I've got my um, active mobile requests here. But let's jump into here. And then from here, team, you, what you will see is we've got uh, our requests which are um, have, uh, requiring attention. So what we will see from these is, if I just scroll down to this demonstration works right here, what it will do is you'll have your work site. It'll give you the worker's name. And then here it'll give you the, the reasons why that, um, what, what needs um, attention down here. So we can see here we've got, you know, employees details. We've got a preferred session, but we've got no job titles. Um, employment requirements uh, are missing, that type of thing. So here it'll tell you um, what you need to do. And then from here, um, what you can do is click on details and then that will, why aren't you taking me? Marty, what's happening? <laughs> sorry, I wasn't watching the screen. I was replying to questions. Oh, to question. oh sorry, darling. So when I'm clicking okay. on here, it is, Oh, you wanting to work this? No, it keeps coming, bringing me back to here for some reason. It's not letting me go in and um, access it. Maybe it's because I'm that's not my work site. So let me go down to demo site. Give me demo site, eh? Sorry, team, because we are in a demo login, sometimes it doesn't always do what we want it to do. And today it's doing that. It might be good to point out to you, there is the filters up the top that you're yeah, just going to that. as well. <laughs> um, so you can so use your filters, <laughs> you can use um, the status as well, oh. and you can also come in and search for an employee or a work site, et cetera. I don't have any from my work site requiring attention, but when I click on here, so this test site, Marty, I'm going to go in and finish it. When I click on details, it just, it's just, oh, yay, we're in, yay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So we're in. So what will happen is it'll bring up the fields that we've already been filling in. And then here we just go in and complete our details. So here we can see that we've got a, a phone number missing. So we pop in our phone number. I don't know what the format of, a, of the phone number in the Philippines is. So you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to be cheeky and just change this to Australia because um, I know what um, the format is for us. It will also only bring up the sections that you need uh, to fix as well. So if there's only one, then that's the only section that will show on your left hand menu that you need to show um, and also in the the front table, it'll show you the parts that you need to fix as well. Again, yeah. bringing that transparency and, and that information all, all to the for, forefront for you. Yeah, so I won't go in and complete that, but I guess I think that shows you, um, demonstrates um, the process. You're yet to send for verification. So these will be your ones that you have um, started, but you haven't clicked the send pay and send for verification button um, and then awaiting verification here is where you can view anything that you've sent off to us and we're waiting to to and we're in, in the processes of verifying that documentation um any questions on any of that team okay just looking at the time Career's got to hurry up a little bit. So next process we're going to have a look at is expiry day, dates. Now, as we know, expiry dates, really, really important. If a worker's qualifications do expire and that, that therefore um, can result in their mobilisation becoming inactive, they will then be locked out of the worksite um, 
particularly if we're using access, if the worksite is using access control. So super duper important that we stay on top of expiry dates. Now, hopefully you will have all been receiving the email that comes out to you at the beginning of every month. So it usually comes out on the first of every month, just reminding you to go in and view any upcoming expiries. This email will continue. You will still get this email to remind you. But team, what you will be able to do is from the home page, you'll see that you've got um, any expiries that are coming up in the next three months. So we can click on that. Alternatively, I can go into workforce management and click on in, in employee expiries. I can also look at company expiries. So if you've got any of your own documentation, um, you can have a look at um, anything that's coming up for expiry. Um, so in here, we'll have all of our, our expiries. So let's jump into here. Um, so here we've got some job title requirements, some documentation that is expiring. So here you'll see it'll let you know um, what is expiring um, down here. And then what you can do is you just click the upload button, upload the documentation, send it through for verification. Again, that documentation will be sent to our team. Our team will then verify the document if it's all OK. And as long as everything else is fine on their profile, they'll then become active on the work site or if it's prior to it actually expiring, it'll update that documentation so the worker won't um, expire. Um, if there is anything not quite right with that documentation, that's when we will send it back. Um, for you to, to review and resubmit the documentation. So that's how expiries work. Nice and easy for you to manage. Very, very easy for you to manage. Um, creating user accounts team. So how do you go about creating user accounts? Okay team, does anybody remember in the company portal what the limit was for you to be able to create user accounts for the company portal? Pop it in the chat window. Does anybody remember? what the limit was. Does anyone know? Doesn't look like, well, we didn't know. I don't know. Five, five. Yeah, so five. So in the past team, you as a business were only able to create five user logins. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. And then if you needed to create any more than five, you needed to send a request through to Dampshire, the service desk, to be able to create additional um, user logins for you. That limit is now gone. So you will be able to create um, as many as you need within your business. OK, so how we go um, about doing that. So how do we create um, a user accounts? So we click on system settings and then here you'll see we've got user login accounts. So we click on user login accounts. Here it will give me a list of all of the current user login accounts you have. So as you can see, we've got quite a few here <laughs> within our business. Um, to create a new user account, you click um, the green button in the top right hand corner, create new company user. You enter in the user's name, their email address, their email address will become their login. And then here you create someone either as a standard user or an admin user. If you create somebody as an admin user, the admin user will allow the user to edit company details, um, to be able to create branches and then create new login accounts. So do this process that we're doing here. Okay. And then when it comes to the work sites, you can either select um, all work sites or you can restrict them just to one work site. Yes, you will, Nicole. You'll definitely um, be able to, to watch this again. It is being recorded. OK, so yeah, so here you will decide all work sites you want them to have access to or restrict them to just being able to view one. You then click the Create User button. Um, an email will then be sent off to that user um, and they'll be able to jump in, create a, a password for their account, and then they will have access to um, the portal the company management portal. So yeah, so nice and easy to create um, user accounts. And then lastly, team, just want to let you know how you can get in contact with us if you do have any questions. So you can raise a ticket 
Um, so um, if you jump on to damstra.zendesk.com um, and then in the top right hand corner, there will be a submit request and this is where you can send through a ticket. Alternatively, um, on here is where you'll be able to access any of our help guides. So everything that I've talked about today, you'll be able to access help guides for. Um, those help guides were also sent out to you in the invite for this training session. So hopefully you've kept that email um, because there was a link to um, those help desk articles there as well. The help desk team, they are open um, Monday to Friday, 24 hours on a Saturday and Sunday. They are 9 a.m. to um, 6 p.m. And then also team in the portal, you will see that bottom right hand corner down the bottom here you have access to our chat now what will happen with the chat team is it will start off as a chat bot okay now the only reason it's starting off with a chat bot is so that it can direct you to the right department okay team you will not be with a chat bot through the whole experience it's going to ask you a few questions direct you to the right department once you're through to the right department you will then be speaking to a, a real person who'll be answering your questions wonderful um, just one last thing that I wanted to finish up on team, if um, in particular this will be for any of our work sites, if you do have new companies coming on board, um, that process hasn't changed, that stays the same, they still go to Dampstra Technology, complete a request to be created, that information will be sent to us and then we'll email them their login details. So um, they do, um, that process doesn't change. And team, that is the new con um, contractor management portal. How do we feel? Give me a one word to let me know how you feel about the new portal. Are we excited to use it? Looking forward to it. Sounds good. Excellent. Love it. Hopefully, team, it will make your lives just that little bit easier on that day-to-day -day running of your business um, and you're able to, you know, um, make the most out of your day. Okay, team, I shall let you go. As we said, this recording will make this available to you um, after the training. We'll also send the link through um, with the um, link to the um, help desk articles. Um, don't forget, if you're having any problems with your logins, do email service. Um, at dampstratechnology.com um, <laughs> uh, and they'll be able to help you um, if you're having troubles logging in. Okay, team, have a very wonderful day. Bye.